Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and some of you know I recently purchased the new M1 Mac Mini and I've been putting it to the test seeing how it can handle my day-to-day -day workload and although having an entire desktop computer this powerful in this ultra compact form factor is pretty neat. Coming from the PC world as I really began to work with it I found that the lack of expandability and limited IO, somewhat detrimental to my workflow, not to mention the peripherals I needed started to clutter up my desk. So I got on Amazon and I started looking for a solution that would minimize some of the extra stuff I had connected to this little machine. And I came across this, the AGP Tech USB hub. So let's get this out of the box, see what it comes with. And I can show you the stuff I was able to eliminate thanks to this. So first is the hub itself, which I'll get to in a minute. But first, I want to talk about this cable. This AGP tech hub is marketed as a USB-C hub. And thanks to clever and sometimes misleading marketing, many people believe that makes it faster. In fact, before I bought this hub, I looked for reviews on YouTube about it, and I couldn't find any on this specific one, but I found some on very similar hubs. And one reviewer even said to look for USB-C accessories because they're faster, which isn't necessarily true. USB-C just refers to the shape of the connector. This cable is the perfect example. This is a USB-C connector. Now it's a USB-A. Same cable, same transfer speeds. In this case, this is a USB 3.0, or now known as USB 3.1 Gen 1 USB hub, meaning it has max transfer speeds of five gigabits per second. It gets confusing because USB 3.1 Gen 1 and Gen 2 can have USB-A or USB-C connectors, but when you get to USB 3.2 where we hit 20 gigabit per second transfer speeds, there's typically only Type-C connectors as well as with USB 4, which is what the Mac Mini has. So on the one hand, we're limited to five gigabits per second on this hub, but knowing that and Thanks to this cable, if you don't want to occupy one of the high-speed Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 ports on the Mac Mini, you can just connect it to the one of the USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports without taking a performance loss as you only get 5 gigabit per second speeds, even if you're plugged into the 40 gigabit per second Thunderbolt port. So there you go. That was my quick lesson on USB protocols. Let's look at this hub and why I picked this one as opposed to the more popular Satechi hub. First feature I was looking for was USB ports, which I can access from the front of the computer. And this has two USB 2 ports, which may seem obsolete, but if you use a wired keyboard or mouse or even a wireless one with an RF dongle, these still use USB 2. There are also two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, as well as two SD card readers, a standard and a mini, which can be used simultaneously. This is lacking a USB-C interface like the Satachi, but again, the Satachi is also a USB 3 hub, so its USB-C port is limited to the same 5 gigabit per second transfer speeds as the USB-A port. Anyway, the final feature of this hub is why I went with it, and that's because it's not just a USB hub, it's also a 2.5 inch SSD enclosure. And I happen to have a 500 gigabyte SSD that I can just slide in here. Now, you can install a 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive in here if you wanted to. If you do, there are a couple of foam pads included that you should stick to the bottom of the enclosure to help absorb the drive vibrations. No real need for these with an SSD, just slide this in and screw the cover on with the attached screws and screwdrivers. Now, thanks to this, I'm able to get rid of my USB hub, my SD card readers, 
and my external SSD and replace them all with a single clean accessory that doesn't really take up any extra space on my desk. Some of the other features of the AGB Tech Hub. First, the color and finish is identical to the Mac. There's also anti-skid rubber pads on the bottom, so you can either put it under the Mac, or if you want a smaller gap between the two, you can put it on top without damaging the finish or scratching the Mac. All the dimensions are exact, so it lines up perfectly. As far as performance, again, it's limited to USB 3 speeds, but keep in mind, USB 3 transfer speeds is still theoretically up to 625 megabytes per second, which is theoretically faster than the 600 megabytes per second SATA 3 speeds. In fact, the SSD I have installed is rated at 550 megabytes per second read and 500 megabytes per second write. Of course, those numbers are max sequential benchmark numbers. I ran some tests under more realistic conditions. First, I checked the speeds of the SD readers. For this test, I used a SanDisk Extreme Pro UHS-1 SD card rated at 170 megabytes per second read speed, which again is max sequential speeds. Typically, the transfer speeds when ingesting MP4 and JPEG or RAW files from my camera is between 85 and 105 megabytes per second. For this test, I had 36.44 gigabytes of data consisting of MP4 and JPEG files, and I transferred it first using my USB 3 SD card reader directly plugged into one of the Mac's USB ports. And the files transferred in six minutes, 35 seconds, with an average transfer speed of 92.3 megabytes per second. Next, I plugged it into the AGP Tech Hub and I transferred the same files first to the Mac internal drive and then again to the SSD I just installed in the hub. Both operations finished in the exact same six minutes and 32 seconds. Finally, I added a mini SD card to the mini SD card reader in the hub. This card contained about 30 gigabytes of the same type of data. I transferred both cards simultaneously to the external drive, which took 11 minutes and 55 seconds, which is exactly the same amount of time it took to transfer each card one at a time. So it wasn't faster to transfer simultaneously, but it wasn't slower either, which is the case with basically all the multi-slot SD card readers I currently own. So SD card readers work the same or better than the ones that I use on my workstation PC. Now, let's see how the external drive I installed in here performs. First, I connected the SSD to a SATA connection in my workstation PC, and I ran Crystal Disk Mark Benchmark and got read and write speeds of 549 megabytes per second and 436 megabytes per second, respectively. Now, in the hub, the same benchmark on the Mac resulted in a read speed of 288 megabytes per second and a write speed of 341 megabytes per second. So not as fast as a direct SATA connection, but that's to be expected as the hub has to convert the SATA connection of the SSD to USB. But again, this is a benchmark, so let's see how it performs with some real world use. Again, I transferred the same 36.44 gigabytes of data first from the external SSD to the Mac's internal SSD, which took two minutes and 24 seconds with an average speed of 253 megabytes per second. Then I transferred it from the internal drive back to the external drive, and that operation took three minutes and 39 seconds at 166 megabytes per second. Finally, for the real, real world test, I rendered an 11 minute DaVinci Resolve project, reading all the media from and writing the output to the external drive, which completed in 16 minutes and 24 seconds. Then I rendered the exact same project, this time reading the media from and writing the output to the Mac's internal drive, and that took 16 minutes and 11 seconds. So only 13 seconds faster. I can live with that, especially considering the extra capacity of the external drive. 
I output the project as H.264. Had I gone with something like ProRes 422HQ, I probably would have run out of room on the internal drive. Okay, I guess it's time to conclude this one with my thoughts on the AGP Tech USB hub for the M1 Mac Mini. Overall, the features, aesthetics, and performance were great. All high marks there. The only con I have is the price. At $73 US, I think it's a little overpriced considering it only replaced $50 worth of accessories at a convenience tax. And I'd say this would be more appropriately priced around 60 bucks. But then again, it's still about $7 cheaper than the very popular Satechi hub. And that doesn't even have a drive bay. So I guess despite what I think the price should be, a product's value is whatever consumers are willing to pay for, and I did buy it after all, so if you're considering it buying it, I hope this review helped in that decision. You can find a link to the AGP Tech Hub in the description below. This is an affiliate link, so any purchases made do help the channel out with no added cost to you. Also, clicking that like and subscribing to the channel would be great too, but that's it for this one, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.